Welcome to my lecture online. Now here we have an example that can really mess you up because the way it's written sometimes it's hard to figure out what's going on here. It almost looks like there's a product the cosine times the square root of the sine times the tangent of the pi of x but that's not what it is. This is the argument the angle of the cosine so you want to make sure that you might want to rewrite it in a way that it makes more sense to you. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to write this as y is equal to the cosine and then put in parentheses what the angle, the argument of the angle is, which is the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x. And then, yeah, with the square root there, sometimes it's better to write it as the whole thing to the one half power. Hmm, so maybe we'll do that as well. So maybe write it like y equals the cosine of the quantity, the sine of the tangent of pi x raised to, and I want to make sure I got the right parentheses, to the one half power, and this whole thing is the angle argument of the cosine of x. So now I think we're ready to go ahead and try to take the derivative of that. So now we take y prime, which is the dy dx, which is equal to, now we're taking the derivative of the cosine, which is the negative sign. So we end up with the negative sign of this argument. And so if you like to write it as that, we can do that. So that would be the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x, like that. So again, that was the argument of the angle. So we have the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine of the angle times the derivative of that angle. So times the d dx of, and now you may want to write it like this, right? So now we have the sine of the tangent of pi x, like this, and to the one half power. So now we see that we take the d dx of this to the one half power. It's essentially the sine to the one half power. So what does that become? So this becomes equal to minus the sine of the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x, like this, times. So when we take the derivative of this, well, that's the derivative that we take the exponent, which is one half, times the sine to the negative one half power, because now we're subtracting one from the exponent, of the tangent of pi x, like this, so now we have the derivative of this, which is one half times the sine to the negative one half power, because we subtract one from the exponent. Notice that this is the same as putting the one half over here. So maybe if we do that, it might make more sense. So we can simply write it like that, that works as well. And so that becomes one half times the sine to the negative one half power of the tangent of pi x times the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of the tangent of pi x times the derivative of that angle argument, so times the d dx of the tangent of pi x. Wow, it's a lot of writing, but we're on the right track, so let's keep going. So. Now notice that this will become, this is equal to minus the sine of the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x times one half times the sine to the minus one half times of the tangent of pi x times the cosine of the tangent of pi x times the derivative of the tangent. Now that's the secant squared. So times the secant squared of pi x times the derivative of pi x times the d dx of pi x, which of course is going to be pi. We can put that in the front 
we have the one half, we have the sine, we could put that in the denominator. Hmm, so I guess finally we can write it like this. We still have a minus, so that's minus the pi times the sine of the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x. Since this is sine to the minus one half, we could put that in the denominator. So maybe we'll put it in the denominator. So we end up with two times the sine to the one half power of the tangent of pi x. We have the cosine of the tangent of pi x times the cosine of the tangent of pi x times the secant squared times the secant squared of pi x. And of course we could maybe write the secant squared as the uh, 1 over the cosine square and all that. We, but we're not going to do that. This is good enough because what we want to do is simply show you how to take the derivative and how to go to that steady process. So again, it's the cosine of this, of the square root of that. So we wrote it with parentheses to realize that this is the angle argument of the cosine. And then when we take the, and we could also, instead of writing the square root symbol, we can write the, the one half symbol if that makes it easier. And then when we take the derivative, we take the derivative of the cosine, which is the minus sine, times the derivative of what's inside. So that comes over here. And then we realize that we have an exponent, so we use the exponent rule, one half times the sine to the exponent minus one of the same argument times the derivative of the item that is risen to the exponent, rose to the exponent, so the sine to one half, we take the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of this, and then we have to multiply that times the derivative of the tangent of pi x, which is the derivative of the tangent is the secant square, times the derivative of the angle pi x, which is simply pi. Wow, so if you go through the pro process in a steady fashion like that, we're less likely to make a mistake. And that is how it's done. Well, here my wife told me that um, we might be able to write this in a, a slightly cleaner fashion, so let's do that, so we don't get confused. So here in the numerator, we end up with uh, minus pi, times the sine of the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x, sine of the tangent of pi x, this, times the cosine of the tangent of pi x times the secant square of pi x, all divided by, and on the denominator, instead of using the sine to the one half power, we're going to write two times the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x. And now the reason why we did that is because you might be tempted to go ahead and cancel these out, but you cannot do that because here we have the square root of the sine of the tangent of pi x, and here we have the sine of this quantity, so there's definitely no way to cancel that out, so be very careful. So here you may not see that right away, but here you can see that it looks like it's the same and you can cancel, but you cannot, and so be careful of that.